Are you a veteran looking to take advantage of your VA benefits and buy a home with no money down, no mortgage insurance, and no minimum credit score required? Well, you can using a VA loan. For those of you unfamiliar, a VA loan is a mortgage loan that is guaranteed by the United States Department of Veteran Affairs. And the loan is for those that have served in the military. In today's video, we're gonna discuss the VA loan requirements for 2024, answer some commonly asked questions regarding VA loans, along with showing you how to do some basic calculations when it comes to VA funding fees, in addition to talking about why VA loans are really the best loan out there. Now, there's something I always like to point out very early in these videos. VA loans are not just for first-time homebuyers. So if you're a veteran who's used your VA benefits before, that doesn't mean you can't use your VA benefits again and buy another home. In fact, you can, but it ultimately comes down to how much entitlement you have left. So if you buy your home with 100% financing to start with, putting no money down, Yes, there's a chance that you can do that again, but there's also a chance you might have to put some money down if you're doing it again based on that entitlement. In addition, something really important to know is VA loans are really the most flexible loan out there when it comes to qualifying to purchase a home. And the reason for that is because they don't really have a minimum credit score. Some things you'll read online is that they have a 580 minimum credit score. You'll also read that they have a 41% max debt to income ratio. What I'll tell you is neither of those are actually lines in the sand. I've seen VA borrowers with less than a 580 get approved to buy a home, and I've also seen borrowers with debt to income ratios over 70% end up buying a home using a VA loan, but it's always going to come down to your specific situation. So keep in mind, this video is just for educational purposes. Don't say, hey, Jeb said this in the video, take it and run with it and think that you're good to buy a home without actually going through the pre-approval process. And that's something I really want to stress here. It's super important when you're thinking about buying a home, the very first step is to go and get pre-approved with somebody that you know, like, and trust. If you're one of those people searching online for VA loan, loans, understand you're going to get a lot of companies out there that don't have your best interest in mind. In fact, some of them have the word veteran in their name, and they typically end up charging you higher rates and higher fees because guess what? They are for-profit companies, although they make you feel like they are there for you as a veteran. So regardless of what you decide when you're buying a home, just make sure you're getting a couple of different quotes. You're going through the process just to make sure you're not getting taken advantage of. So what are the VA loan requirements for 2024? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna dive into right after you hit that subscribe button if you find any value in my videos at all. And also do me a favor and subscribe to the channel if you support my work here and wanna stay updated on everything VA and mortgage related. So who actually qualifies to get a VA loan? I think that's a really important place to start. Just because you served in the military doesn't necessarily mean that you can use a VA loan to purchase a home. In fact, the VA loan requirement requirement reads that you have to be active duty or serve 90 continuous days or met length of service requirement, which is typically 90 days in wartime and 181 days in peacetime or completed 90 days of active duty or six credible years in selected reserve or the National Guard, or you're a surviving spouse of a veteran who died in service or from a service-related disability and you have not remarried. And also the minimum active duty service requirements depends on when you serve, which I'll provide a link in the description below if you wanna go check out and see if you meet those requirements. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned not going online and searching for lenders to get pre-approved. I think it's important to note that I'm not a mortgage lender. I have no skin in the game when it comes to actually doing your loan. I'm really here just to provide you with education, with value, so that you can use the information to put yourself in the best possible position if you end up buying a home. But with that, I did create a referral link in the description below of people that I know personally, that I like and trust, that can guide you through that mortgage process if you need a referral. So if you don't have a lender that you trust, do me a favor and click that link in the description. Now, earlier I mentioned that one of the nice things about VA loans is that they don't really have a credit requirement, if you will, a minimum credit requirement. Now, other loan programs out there like FHA, if you're putting three and a half percent down, you have to have a 580. If you're putting 10% down, you have to have a 500. Conventional loans, you really have to have somewhere around a 620 to get approved for a loan. Well, VA doesn't really have a number per se that they're looking for, 
But something that you should know is that the better your credit score, the better the terms that you're going to get on the loan. So if you have super, super low credit scores, it might be worth trying to fix your credit prior to going through the pre-approval process. Even though you might get approved for the loan, you're likely going to have a higher interest rate, which in turn is going to end up having a higher monthly payment than you would if you had better credit scores. So with that, the lower your credit scores, you need more compensating factors with the lenders. So in many cases, if you don't have that 620 minimum credit score, you might find it difficult to actually get approved for a VA loan, even though they don't have a minimum credit score requirements. And that's because they're looking at other factors on the loan. How much monthly debt do you have? How much income do you have? What your DTI is? All of these different factors. So if you have a really high DTI and your credit's not really good, it's going to be more difficult to get qualified than the person that has the higher credit score and the lower debt to income ratio. So even though VA doesn't have a minimum credit requirement, it's important to have a good credit score because you're going to end up getting better terms along the way. But the best part about VA loans is the fact that they don't have a minimal down payment. In fact, there's no down payment at all. You can buy a home with no money down using a VA loan. This is a huge, huge benefit because there are really no other loan programs out there like it when it comes to buying a house. And that's because not only do you not have to put any money down, you also don't have mortgage insurance when you're buying that home. So typically when you buy a home and you put less than 20% down, you have a separate fee that you pay every single month along with your mortgage called mortgage insurance which can be extremely costly when putting little to no money down and especially when you have lower credit scores. So the fact that the VA allows you to purchase a home with no money down and no mortgage insurance is a huge benefit to the veterans out there. And the primary reason for this is because it's a thank you for serving our country. It's part of the country giving back to the veterans who gave so much for this country. And with that, I just want to take a minute and say thank you for your service. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned there's no mortgage insurance when buying a home, but there is a fee that you you need to be aware of that is often not talked about when talking about VA loans, and that is the VA funding fee. So VA has a fee that they charge on every single loan, unless you're disabled, which we'll talk about here in just a minute, that is added on to the purchase price of your home. So let's say, for example, you're buying a home for $500,000. Well, unless you meet that exception and have the VA fee waived, you're going to have a funding fee added on to that loan. So for a $500,000 purchase, the VA funding fee is two. 2.15%. In fact, it's the same for any first time home buyer buying a home using VA. Now, if you're a buyer using subsequent use on the VA loan, you're putting some money down, the VA fee is likely going to be less, but that's a conversation for another day. Just make sure when you're talking to your lender, if you're somebody that's purchasing using a VA loan for the second or third time that you discuss what that funding fee is. But for a first time home buyer, it's 2.15% of the purchase price and it's added to the loan. So you're actually going to be financing, in this case, $510,750. That's because they take that $500,000 purchase price, they multiply it by 2.15%, which gives you $10,750. You add that to the purchase price, so now you're financing that total amount. So in turn, your mortgage payments are going to be based off the purchase price plus the funding fee. Now I know some of the people watching this going, why do I have to pay a funding fee? That's garbage. I should have to pay anything. I understand, but also understand you're putting no money down. There's no mortgage insurance involved. So it's really a small price to pay for doing business, if you will. But there is a way to get around that funding fee. So if you have a VA approved disability of more than 10%, you can get around the funding fee entirely. So maybe you don't meet that full 10%. Well, in that case, your VA funding fee might actually be reduced. So just make sure you're talking about it with your lender. You tell them your situation so that they can get the right calculation for you when going through that process. And another scenario where you don't have to pay a VA funding fee is if you're a surviving spouse, meaning that your spouse passed away in action or as a result of a service-connected injury. And the final exception is for those that return to active duty after receiving a Purple Heart. So if you meet any of those exceptions there, then you're either going to have your your VA funding fee reduced or waived entirely. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that VA actually has a requirement that you have to have a debt to income ratio of less than 41%. But I also said that's not necessarily true because I've seen VA loans approved with borrowers having debt to income ratios above 70%. 
One of my clients actually bought a home about five years ago with a debt to income ratio of above 70%, which is absolutely crazy when you think about it, but it is possible out there. Now, if you're a veteran and you're watching this, you're going, what is debt to income ratio? How is it calculated? Well, what they do is they take your total income, your gross monthly income before any taxes come out and they divide it by your monthly debts. Now, it's not all of your monthly debts. It's just your debts that show up on your credit report, which are typically things like your car loans, your student loans, any sort of installment loans, credit cards, that sort of thing. They're not factoring in what you spend on groceries or what you spend on childcare. They're really only looking at the debts that show up on your credit report. So for example, let's say that you're a veteran and you make $120,000 a year. Well, that would break down to $10,000 a month in gross monthly income. So now that we have your income, we need to divide it by your monthly debts in order to determine what your debt to income ratio is. Now, something important to note, you have a front end ratio and a back end ratio when it comes to your debt to income ratio. Your front end ratio is just the housing expenses of the home that you're buying. So let's say you're buying a home and the mortgage payment is $4,000 per month. Well, in that case, you would have a front end ratio of 40% because we have your housing expenses at $4,000 a month. We know your gross monthly income is $10,000 a month, so you have a front end ratio of 40%. But with that, your back end ratio typically ends up being the most important factor when getting pre-approved for a loan because that takes your housing expenses plus those debts that show up on your credit report and they divide that into your gross monthly income. So let's say, for example, you have housing expenses on the home that you're gonna be buying. It's gonna cost you $4,000 a month. Let's say you have a $500 car payment. Let's say that you have $300 that you spend on credit cards and you have $200 in student loans, for example. That means you have $1,000 of monthly debt that shows up on your credit report. So the 4,000 plus the 1,000, that's 5,000. We divide that into your $10,000 gross monthly income, that means your back end ratio is 50%. So that means your front end ratio is 40%, your back end's 50%. So you're probably watching this going, well, would I be approved based on that? Well, a lot of it probably has to do on where your credit score is. If you have a really high credit score, you have other compensating factors like money in the bank, even though you're not going to use it, you have some money in the bank, you can probably get approved with a 50% back end ratio. But on the flip side, if you have really low credit scores, let's say you have a 550 and you don't really have any money in the bank and your debt to income ratio is at 50%, you might find it difficult to get pre-approved in that instance. And that's why it's super important to make sure you're talking to a professional. You're not just watching a video like this, doing calculations on your own, trying to figure out whether or not you qualify. So instead, take the information as education and then call a lender to go through the process to see if you actually meet the guidelines to purchase. And again, a quick reminder, if you don't know anyone, don't have someone you know, like, and trust, do me a favor and check that link in the description below. So those are the main VA loan requirements when buying a home, but there are some other things that you need to keep in mind that need to be true in order for you to use a VA loan. A VA loan can only be used for a primary residence. It cannot be used for you to buy an investment property and rent out. It's only for homes that you're actually going to live in. Now, one of the questions that often comes up when talking about this is, wait, what if I buy a home and then I get stationed somewhere else? I get moved to another location. Can I rent that home out then? And the answer is absolutely. You can rent it out then. You can't buy that home with the initial intent of trying to rent it out. It has to be a primary residence for a period of time before you turn it into a rental property. And the other thing that has to be true is if you're buying a condo, that condo has to be approved by the Veterans Affairs. Every condo has to be VA approved. Now, there are cases where you can find condos that aren't VA approved and get a VA spot approval in order to get that property qualified. But for the most part, when you're out there looking at properties, using a VA loan, that property is going to have to be VA approved. Now, single family homes, townhomes don't have to be VA approved. It's only the case where they're actually condominiums. Now with that, I know people are gonna say, hey, well, a VA appraisers are way strict. They're gonna require certain requirements when they're looking at single family homes. Yes, VA appraisers do look for things when appraising property, but the main thing to look at there is it just really can't have any health concerns in the property. You can't have a property that doesn't have a heater. You can't have a property that doesn't have a stove. Those aren't going to qualify for a VA loan. So in most cases, if you're buying a single family, you're probably in good shape, but when buying a condo, 
Keep in mind, it has to be VA approved. Now, if you're wondering, hey, I'm looking at this condo, is it VA approved? I'll actually put a link in the description below where you can go search condos. Now, something important to note, oftentimes when looking at this list, you won't see the condo complex listed on there just because sometimes it's listed by the track number on there versus the actual name. So when doing this, make sure you're talking to a professional real estate agent, somebody that understands VA, that knows the process, can dig a little bit deeper and find out if the property's actually on an approved list or not. Because oftentimes you can have someone telling you it's not when it is. So you just wanna make sure before you end up writing an offer and going under contract on a property and getting your hopes up and finding out that it's not actually VA approved. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about when talking about VA loans is that you have to have steady income and employment. Now, if you're somebody that served in the military, you can use your active duty as employment in order to meet that requirement. But if you're someone that's come out of the military, you haven't had a job for six months, you don't really have an income, you're going to find it difficult to buy a home. You need to have proof of income and employment in order to get approved for a loan, even if you're a veteran and you're using no money down. And if you have questions about that, that's something you can talk about to your lender. You can tell them about gaps of employment, changes in job, and they can kind of walk you through it and say, okay, based on that, you should be good to purchase, or you might have to wait some time before you can move forward and buy a home just based on this information. So you know, it's super important. I mentioned it several times to make sure you're working with a professional, somebody that understands VA loans in detail and can really guide you through that process. Now, if you're watching this, you're new to the home buying process, you're just finding out about VA loans, want to know what the rest of the process looks like because you're unsure, I created a first-time home buyer course to guide you through that process. Everything from A to Z. We talk about the idea of picking a lender, picking a real estate professional, what the escrow process looks like, how to walk through an offer, how to make an offer, how to negotiate, really everything that you need to know to be an expert when it comes to buying a home. If that interests you at all, do me a favor and check that link below. Now with that, I want to address the commonly asked question that I get when it comes to VA loans. People say, hey, I'm a veteran. I qualify for a VA loan. Should I use my VA loan now or should I wait and use that for another property and use a conventional loan now? Well, each one of those is going to be a case-by-case -case scenario. So you have to use it you know, when you feel best about it. But what I will say is that you can use the VA benefits more than once. So I would typically say use your VA loan if you qualify for it. It's a great loan, especially if you have little money to put down and you're in a position where you can qualify for the home that you want using a VA loan, VA loans are really, really good loans. In fact, I wish I qualified for a VA loan because I would use it myself. So if you qualify, I would say more often than not, it makes sense to use it. But when talking to a lender, have them run the scenario against a conventional loan, against an FHA loan. If you're thinking about putting a little bit more money down, that way you have a comparison. You can look at all of the loans and ultimately decide, hey, which one is the best for me because of down payment, because of mortgage payment, because of all of these different factors. One thing important to note about VA is they typically have the best mortgage rates out there for any type of loan program. So not only are you putting no money down, having no mortgage insurance, you're also getting the best interest rates in the industry in most cases. So hopefully that provides all the information you need on VA loans. But if you have additional questions about VA loan requirements, do me a favor and check out this video here.